Hey folks, it's Pat here. Got uh, another chapter 11 question for you. And uh, this one is going to be the hypothesis test for difference of population means using the t-test. All right. This one is a pain. Okay. And it's, it's really hard if you try and do it on your own using the formulas because there are actually multiple formulas, formulas that you have to do before. Well, you have to do a formula before you can plug that into another formula. And so it's kind of a pain um, to do it by hand. Or you can use a math cracker site for this. All right, so if you've watched the other videos, you should be familiar with that. I'll show you how to do both methods here, okay? Um, so, but th th this one's a bit of a challenge, all right? But it's just like the z-test one. We're comparing two populations, but we don't have the population standard deviation in these. So we have to go off sample standard deviation, which requires that we use the t-test for them. Okay, but let's just jump in. Um, let's do our alternate hypothesis first. Then we can bulk out our null, and then we can figure out our test statistic, which of course we know is going to be T. But we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So University Data Center has two computers. Center wants to examine whether Computer 1 is receiving tasks which require comparable processing time to those of Computer 2. Random sample of seven processing times from Computer 1 showed a mean of 76 sevens with, <laughs> with standard deviation of 16 or 6, 17 seconds while a random sample of 11 processing times from computer 2, all right, showed a mean of 60 seconds, standard deviation of 15. Assume that the populations of processing times are normally distributed for each of these computers. Variances are equal. So if variances are equal, we can use one of the calculators in, um, in uh, MathCracker. That would also be important if we were doing this in Excel, which of course, you know, we'll teach you how to do that in the next class. <laughs> so, but anyway, um, here we go. Let's go through this. Can we conclude at the dot one level significance mean processing time of computer one greater than mean processing time of computer two? So finally, there's our claim. So we think that mean one minus mean two would be greater than zero. Okay, so grab all that stuff. Copy that, paste it, and of course cover all your bases with your null hypothesis, so that would be everything else. Test statistic on here, here's T, but it's asking us for degrees of freedom. We're comparing two populations, so it's going to be um, the sample sizes added together minus two, all right, for degrees of freedom here. And so let's just go ahead and do that. Our sample size on the first one was seven, and then our second one was 11. Take those subtract 2 from that and there we go we get 16 so that's how you do degrees of freedom using uh, two populations if you don't know the population standard deviation so value of the test statistic all right here we go all right Ta -da. <laughs> it's exactly like the t t the z1 except for it's got this twist in it right here so the top part's going to be the same though it's mean one uh mean of our, our sample mean of population one minus our sample mean of population two minus um, the difference between population two uh, mean, population one mean minus population two mean, but we don't have these, so we set these to zero. The problems don't give you this one in these, so you don't have to worry about that. But that's all over something new here. Square root of, this is called, this S, this SP is, is, is our pooled variance, okay? And pooled variance is the variance that's shared between both of them. Okay, and so we actually have to calculate this guy right here. Okay, so it's uh, yeah, it's denoted as S because of standard deviation, pool standard deviation, but square that, and so we get pooled variance instead times one over popular sample size of, of number one of population number one plus one over the population of two. Okay, or the, the, the sample size of population two. Um, all together. <laughs> all right. So if you want to do this one by hand, I'm going to show you how to do that here real quick. But before we do that, we got to calculate this guy right here. All right. Which is our pooled variance, which is ta -da, another equation. And so if I haven't lost you yet, let me walk you through this one as well. Our pooled variance, okay, is the degrees of freedom. So n minus one of our first sample times the standard deviation squared, which is our variance of the first sample, plus degrees of freedom of our second one, which is n minus one of our second population or of our second sample times its uh, standard deviation squared, which is the variance, all over. So n1, so sample size of one plus n2, sample size of two, minus two. So you might recognize this. This is our degrees of freedom from um, the uh, test statistic that it just told us in Alex there. So if we want to do this one, we got to calculate this guy first. Let me show you how to do that, okay? 
So in this calculator, what we're going to do is we're going to start with n minus 1. You could just do it as degrees of freedom, but I'll do it the long way here. So our sample size for sample 1 was 7 minus 1. Okay, close that times its sample standard deviation, which was 17 seconds. Okay, close that and square that whole thing. All right, then plus sample size of our second sample, which was 11 minus 1. So same thing as degrees of freedom times its standard deviation, all right, which was 15. There we go, 15. Square that. Okay, grab this whole thing, highlight it all, otherwise it'll go in there wrong. Okay, and then hit your divide by, there we go. Um, N1, which is our sample size of 1. Um, 7 plus our sample size of 2, which is 11 minus 2. All right, so this should come out to be exactly the same as that right there. Okay, you can just do that part in your head. <laughs> okay, there you go. So you got 249. All right, so um, that goes in uh, here now. <laughs> it goes in here. All right, and so here we go. Let's um, store that. Okay, clear this all out, and then let's start punching this 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 monster in here. And so we start with our sample mean of 1, which was 76, minus our sample mean of 2, which was 60. Okay, and that is all over the square root of 249, or you can get your recall button here if you get one that's all decimalized on you, which is fun. And that's all over, and that's multiplied by 1 over our sample size of 1, which is 7. Okay. And then close parenthesis plus, oh no, no, don't do the close parenthesis. There we go. It's all got to be in the same thing here. One uh, dang, divided by a uh, sample size of two, which was 11. Now give me one arrow key and now a close parenthesis. Make sure this is underneath that. All right, so now we can go there, and there we go. There's our test statistic right there. Should look familiar. It's got to be between probably negative 3 and positive 3, and so this one looks pretty good. 2097, or 2.097. Yeah, don't screw that up. Crit value on this one, no different than the other t-tests that we've done. Just take a table lookup using um, our level of significance, dot one This one's greater than, so dot one and degrees of freedom on this one is 16 so just pull that right off your calculation right here there you go there's our test statistic which is 1.337 okay and can we conclude that the mean processing time of computer one is greater than the mean of two this is much higher than this so yes yes we can do that okay so let's go ahead and give that a check got it right <laughs> somehow <laughs> we managed to get that one right now if this and this seemed like a little bit much to do. Again, module three folder in, um, in Blackboard. Uh, head over to Math Cracker, which is this guy right here. Go ahead and punch all that stuff in here. And just make sure you're using the right test. T-test for two means unknown population standard deviation. You'll find that in T-test calculators right here. And you do have to fill out all of this stuff just like you did with the Z-test one. Okay. Make sure that you're very careful about putting these in. You get your level of significance right. You get your directions right as well. Hit the solve button. And next thing you know, you'll have the information without necessarily having to go through this grind right here. All right. So, and again, I don't, I mean, if you want to do this, it's absolutely fine. It is a little bit challenging but at the same point in time um you know let I me mean, push yourself but again at the same point you know we, we we don't do this in the field okay we use software to do that and so you can use software here to do it as well all right uh any questions on that ping me otherwise uh we'll check you out in the next video take care now bye